Hello Internet, I'm here with another uh, RPG game video. Um, this time I've already coded the whole thing, uh, uh, and I'm not going to go through the whole coding. So what it is, is there's now a little menu. There's a, a hamburger menu type thing. I've been, you know, I've said during several videos, oh my gosh, we need this thing. <laughs> you know, whenever we want to add like a store or something else, it's like, where do we put those links? There's no menu. So now there's finally a menu, and it really does need to be something built into the base game. Um, I started to do this uh, whole thing kind of just in advance to kind of feel out how I was going to do it in preparation of recording a video. There was actually a lot more than I expected. It seemed like it was probably going to be a long video. Um, so I'm going to do something different this time. I'm just going to go through the code and show you what it looks like and, and where you might modify things and, and, and stuff like that. Um, if you don't care about all that, you can, you know, pull down the latest copy of Pet Game and it's all there. Uh, you can copy paste the files into your project if you've already got one going. Um, or, uh, you know, if you're starting from scratch, great. Um, yeah, much easier. Uh, or go ahead and follow along this video now. <laughs> and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll show you where everything is and, and that might help you for future videos. Also, if you're watching these out of order, these videos out of order, this is the uh, first one you're seeing. If you go back and watch older videos, you're going to see me do some other things, put links in other weird places because there wasn't a nav menu. So, I don't know, as occasionally happens with these videos, some of the older ones kind of get dated by new features added to the base game. And, and, and this is such a case. So anyway, let's go through them. Um, I can log out also, and there's a, a different menu. I thought I'd show that. I did also add this about page. Um, and maybe this is the first thing to talk about. Here's a new page in the game. And you probably want to modify this, you know, if you're going to pull in an, an about page. Uh, from the code, or again, if you're like cloning this thing from scratch, starting from the very beginning, you're definitely going to want to update this to say something about, uh, you know, your particular game, or just remove the page entirely if you don't want it. Honestly, the only reason I went through the trouble of adding one is it seems silly to have a single link. I, I really wanted to demonstrate, hey, multiple links might be here. Um, so I needed an excuse for a second page, and so I made this about page. There's also the sign up page. Um, I'm not going to sign up. I'll go ahead and log in again. And just go through these. So here we have a home, which takes you here. We got about. Uh, we can still go back to home, right? Mem it remembers that we're logged in, and, and then you can log out. So anyway, let's look at how that's composed in the code. Let me just make this full screen here, and I don't need to run it anymore. Save me some CPU cycles or something. I don't know. Okay, so the game has always had this nav menu here, um, and used to look slightly different. Um, these links, but I think the main thing is we didn't used to have this hamburger menu here. So this is the new thing. Um, and maybe I should have kept this thing running just so I can refer back. So now I'm regretting my previous decisions. <laughs> so this is the hamburger menu, right? Uh, it's just an image that I threw together. We can check it out. I don't know. Images hamburger.svg. Fine. Uh, you can find that in www.root images. Here's the hamburger menu, and then here's all the various uh, menu icons. I will say, if you follow along with the video for adding uh, Font Awesome icons, Font Awesome has like 1,000, 2,000 icons. Um, it might be better to use theirs. They, they probably have like a nicer looking house, honestly. Um, but I don't know, for whatever, should Font Awesome be built into our RPG game? Arguably, maybe, I don't know, but it isn't right now. So I threw together these quick uh, icons in, in Inkscape. It's an open source, free, uh, vector image editor thing worth poking at if, if you want to make uh, some simple graphics yourself like this. It's, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but you know, you find tutorials to figure it out. But anyway, so I just use that to throw together these these icons. Um, and that is honestly, though, it, these sorts of little touches ended up making the, the whole process take a long time, felt a little too long for the video. So anyway, we've got the hamburger icon, and it has a little click, right on click, do a thing. Uh, oftentimes, if you've been following along with these other videos, uh, there's usually a, a function name here. So, like, let's go to the house. Um, and I'm kind of talking about this stuff because I'm, I don't want to assume uh, too much about what you know coding. So, so usually I would say on click, and then we're going to call this function do rest. And we'd say, what's do rest? Okay, here it is. Here's the whole body. You don't have to call some function like that. You can just write code. Um, sorry, let's go back. Oops, I've lost my place completely back to the nav menu, you can just write any any amount of code in here. And in fact, if you want multiple lines, you can even do this. 
I would advise against it. You probably don't want to start writing tons of code here because this thing is going to get huge or run off the, the end. Uh, if, you, if you're going to do more than one line of code, you should probably just do a function down here. Um, and if you only want one line of code, you don't need the curly braces. So I would, I think a good rule of thumb is if you need curly braces, you probably should just pull it out into a whole separate function. So, but anyway, for this, it really is just when you click this thing, set dropdown is open to true. And that will, by some magic, open the dropdown. The magic is there's this whole new component, nav menu dropdown. So this contains the actual menu. Uh, and you can see this dropdown is open. Go in here. And this has all of the um, stuff for, for displaying. So this, this component is always on the page, whether the thing is open or not, right? We always include this nav menu dropdown. But if it's open, then it's going to display all this stuff. Um, and it also does have some code uh, that, that it does while it's open um, and things like that. So uh, in here, we have this is kind of a, a very common thing you'd see. Uh, for example, actually, I can show you somewhere else it comes up. We go back to my house. Uh, when you open a dialog like this, right, the kind of strategy is you dim out the background. How do you do that? That's just a whole thing. There's just a big old element that's taking up the whole page and it has a transparent background. You can see that down here. It's awfully small. Yeah, here we go. I have to make it bigger. So it has a background color of black, 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 but 50% opacity. That's what this 0.5 at the end is. Um, and this is set up so if you click on it, it closes the dialog. I've done the exact same thing here with the modal. Um, it looks like I've actually gone with a slightly darker shade of, of black. That's arbitrary. We could change that to be 0.5 if you like that better. Um, feel free to change that in the, in the CSS. Do whatever you want with this, of course. Um, but it's the same principle, right? We've got this thing, this backdrop. It takes up the whole page and it is listening for clicks. So that's what this is here. We have a backdrop. It's a button because it's expecting clicks. And when you click it, it calls a function, do close. And we can go and see, oh, in this case, I've pulled it out to a separate file. Here's do close. And it says, um, and this is a little bit of extra trickery, but I'm saying let the parent know. So if you notice back here, we said bind is open. That's a little different from how we've used other components. If you are familiar with the pet game, or sorry, RPG game code, you may remember this character card where we pass in an image and a name and a level and an energy. And that's kind of it. There's the, the information is only going in, never coming out. For this, I wanted it to be two way. I didn't really need to. I could have done it other ways, but this is a way. And to do that, you do this bind thing, and your binding is open. Um, and so when the drop down menu closes now, it wants to let the um, I was going to say the person, the, the component that's including it. To, to get this information back out. So, so now the information can go in, but it can also come back out and update this drop down as open thing out here. So I don't know, it's a, it's a, again, it's not strictly necessary for the nav menu, but it is a very useful thing. If you're going to make custom inputs like type head components or, or other things, custom radio button selection things, um, you, you know, you, you want to be able to pass in data, but then also get that data out to do something uh, with it, something that, something else, I don't know. It comes up. So it's useful to see. If you're curious about how you can make your own components to have information go in and come back out, this is a template you could use. You can see this naming convention of change that is actually important. There's this event callback thing. What's that? And if you Google for these things, Google for like two-way data binding with Blazor and event callbacks, you will find other tutorials and information about this. Um, the other tricky thing that happens in here is I ask for this navigation manager. Uh, so current player is something provided by RPG game. Remember me is something provided by RPG game. Navigation manager isn't. Navigation manager comes from Microsoft from ASP.NET Core. Yep, a little pop-up tells us perfect timing. That is a Microsoft provided thing. Um, and this service that we can ask for, all these things are called services, but whatever. This, this navigation manager that we can ask for uh, gives you a lot of little features on it. Um, it will let you, if you wanted a button click to like take you somewhere. You could say, oh, navigate me somewhere. Or if you just want information about the current URL, you can ask for that URI, base URI. History entry state. Um, I actually haven't used that one before. I guess just say. Anyway, there's a bunch of stuff here and you can Google and, and see what those do. And one of the useful things in there is, particularly for this component, is you can say, hey, I want to know whenever the location changes. Uh, so if you had some component it was supposed to update itself as someone navigates around, you know, something that stays on the page, like this navigation or like this nav bar, I should say. Um, you would listen for this. You can say, cool, when the location changes, I want to add 
this function to, to the list of functions to be called when the location changes. And in this case, I just say close. So what this does is when you open this thing and you go to a new page, it closes because the, the page has changed. It closes the nav menu. Um, and that's just so that it doesn't stay open as you click around this nav menu just doesn't, right? Otherwise it would stay open in your face, but that's kind of not the behavior we want, right? We want it to go away after a click. And there's two ways you could do that. You could add to every single one of these links and on click do close kind of like we did with the backdrop, right? So we said, if you close the backdrop, we want to close. You can do the same thing for all these links. You could say, well, when you click this link, you should close. When you click this link, you should close. When you click this thing, we also want to close because we have a do log out. But that's a lot of copy pasting for all these things. What if you forget on one of your links and you might not even notice for a while? So it's just safer um, to say, hey, look, I don't care how, but if you, you somehow go to a new page, I want to, I want to close. And so that's what this code sets up. Um, for a little extra carefulness, dispose is a function. This is a whole other thing you can Google if you're not familiar with uh, iDisposable. But if your component says, hey, I am disposable, <laughs> that's not really what the I stands for in this case. It's an interface. But if, if you implement iDisposable here, then you must provide this dispose method. You'll see that it will complain if I don't. It'll say, hey, you, you didn't give me this dispose. Um, but if you write, if you do this, then when this component goes away for some reason from the application, uh, this is the extra logic that will be called. So that maybe that sounds kind of weird. A better example might, would be something like, if we look at the home page, right? We have these character cards, and maybe maybe there's an explore thing, and your and your pet dies or something uh, as a result of an exploration. That would be rather harsh, but maybe that happens. Um, and what if there is some logic you want to do when this component is removed? Um, you, it's, the, the kind of logic you would want in there is, for, for in this case, like that's not a great example. A better example is this nav bar. What happens when, you know, maybe you go to a page where this nav bar doesn't exist for some reason. Um, well, then we want to make sure to stop listening to location changes. Um, this is kind of a memory, it is a memory efficiency thing. You could have a memory leak if you don't do this kind of cleanup. You've told this navigator hey, you need to tell this function every time the location changes. So when we stop existing, we need to tell it, hey, don't notify me anymore. Otherwise, it kind of holds on to uh, this, this thing, even though it's not on the page anymore. And, and those could build up, depending on what you're doing. The nav menu isn't going to go away, probably from page to page, right? It's probably always going to be here. But it's a best practice, you know, I don't know. Maybe there's a, another page where, for some reason, I forgot again, and the, and the nav link isn't there. And then every time I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and kept adding on navigation managers, they would keep saying, and let me know, and let me know, and let me know, but never getting removed. And that's the kind of, you don't want a bug, you know, minimize the impact of the bug. That would be a bad bug if the nav bar is missing. It is a worse bug if because it's missing on a page, you're accumulating this, this uh, memory usage. You've got this memory leak. So this is just a good bit of cleanup to do, even though it might, you know, probably not applicable to this component. Probably not going to come up. But anyway, so that's that. And then we have the logout, which, um, you know, as I mentioned, it it also makes sure to close on its own. Um, because, sorry, didn't quite mention that. But I was when I was pasting in. Let's go back here. When I was being like, oh, you know, maybe you'd paste in all these on clicks. Oh, but this on click already has a do logout, so you can't do both. Um, well, the way to do both is to <laughs> in do logout call do close. Why do I call do close though, right? We just said, hey, whenever we navigate somewhere else, um, then we will automatically close the uh, menu. Well, you can log out from the, if we go reload here, here we are logged in. And when we log out, we're taken to this page, but we haven't moved anywhere. It is the same page. Um, and so to make sure, right, even though we didn't change page, a logout, we really want to make sure the menu closes. So that's why on logout, I close the page. A lot of times when you log out, you are going to navigate away, but not always. So that's why that's here. Um, I think that's it. Uh, again, all the images can be found here. Also, again, you can look at the CSS. And if you want to change anything about how it works, you can do that. Uh, I didn't try to make sure that this would work well on mobile or widescreen. So we've got you know, much more area and we open it up, it's going to be aligned with this content area. But if we size it down, right, it doesn't get like pushed off the edge or something. 
Um, so there was a little bit of work. You might see some crazy math in the CSS <laughs> like this, and that's what that's for. Uh, I might as well explain what this does. Maybe there should be a comment. But what we're trying to do, if you look at the padding here, um, I want it to be centered visually right over this uh, part of the page. But that part of the page is narrower when we have less screen space, but it has this maximum. So this is kind of interesting, right? We don't know how wide it's going to be. It really depends on the width of your browser or maybe your zoom level or what device, you know, the phone you're using, how many pixels wide is it? Who knows? Um, so the complicated math here, what we're really doing is we're saying, okay, from the top, we're going to be one REM from the top. So that's this little height here. Easy. That part's easy. The part that's more complicated is we want to find out what is this width? What is, is this part? And the way we can do that is we say, okay, take the total width of the page. That's 100%. So take this width, subtract off the content width. That would be this 800. So suppose that this is 1,000 pixels wide right now. And this content area is 800 at most. So we'd say find 1,000 minus 800. That's 200. But 200 is the space on the left and the right. So we divide by 2. And that gets us just the space on the left. So as this divide by 2 is. And then I want to add one more rem to push you in. Bonk. But again, maybe the width isn't 800. Maybe it's smaller like this. So what I do after, and it's a little hard to see because of all the parentheses, this is that part. We add this max, which says, hey, I want you to pick the biggest number. What's bigger, one REM or the result of this math? And the result of this math might be a negative number because it might be that 100% of the screen is, right, let's say this is 400, but we're saying subtract 800. So now we're negative 400. Half of that is negative 200, right? So now we'd have a negative margin, which would push these things way off the, the left. So this max <laughs> keeps it within the, the thing, one REM. It's got to at least be one REM. And an REM, if you're not super familiar with CSS, that is in relation to a uh, it's a font measurement. So it's like, what is the, the height of a character kind of uh, in your font? And it's often good. I've mentioned this in other videos. It's often good to express your sizes in relation to font sizes because people with their browsers can customize their font size in addition to Zoom. And if they're scaling up their font, you probably want to scale other things proportionally. Uh, I will be honest and say I haven't done thorough testing of what happens if someone controls their font size. It's a pretty uncommon thing to do. Um, but if you've got like older players or, or people that otherwise have maybe vision issues or whatever, uh, they might have tweaked all kinds of those things. So it's, it's good to, you've done a lot of the work already if you use REMs instead of pixels. Uh, so anyway, and all that said too, browsers are getting a little smarter. That used to be a bigger problem like 5, 10, 15 years ago. Modern browsers are actually a lot better than they used to be. Um, but anyway, that's a tangent. So that's it. We now have a menu. <laughs> Um, and again, if you've seen any previous videos where I was like, oh gosh, where are we going to put things? I guess we'll just slap a little link up here in the little nav bar, not the best. Gosh, I wish we had a nav menu. Well, now we finally have a nav menu. Um, if you are watching these out of order and you see a video that starts doing that, you can be like, haha, I'm smarter and cooler in the future. I'll, I'm going to put the link in here instead. And of course, for any videos from here on out, this is what I'll use. If I add any other pages, they will go in this menu. So. There you go. Um, kept it under 20 minutes. Great. It certainly would have not have been if I coded it all right in front of you. I think I easily spent an hour just doing it, going back and forth, figuring out things, you know, doing the silly math and, and all, the, all that stuff, making all the graphics. So, so anyway, uh, that's it. Different kind of video today. Maybe a little less. I don't know. We didn't add a cool new feature to the game. Maybe that doesn't feel quite as cool, but we do have an, a better UI. And again, feel free to mess with this stuff, right? You can, any of these things, I would say play around in the browser. Um, you can look at any of these and say, you know what, I don't want, you know, I, I don't know, I want a background color. Uh, I want it to be white and give me some padding. And I'm going to put a border radius, right? Like if you want to do any of this kind of stuff on a shadow, um, you can do this, right? You can do whatever you want with this thing. So feel free to mess around, customize this make it your own, make your own graphics, find some graphics online for these menus, um, play with Inkscape. I'll put a link to that tool in the description. I don't know that I have before. It's very, again, open source free. If the learning curve proves too much, eh, at least you tried. Um, but if you can wrap your head around it, 
Again, it's a great way to make uh, icons that scale really well. That's the advantage of SVG. I think I've talked about that in another video. Uh, so anyway, thanks again very much. Have fun making a game. Let me know if you make a game. I'd love to know. And if you have questions about any of the code or ideas for future videos, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I'm reading the few that come in. <laughs> thanks again. Goodbye.